obviously a great honor to be here with everybody today um, to see where this league has come from from 1993 to where it is today to watch the growth to watch how this all-star game has, has changed and, and uh, rolled around it's it's a, it's a great honor for me and really in my 21 years as a commissioner the one of the greatest honors I had was this winter when I got to notify our first class that they were all going to be inducted into the inaugural Hall of Fame uh, for the Frontier League. And for those of you that are, that are younger players and stuff, think about this, that uh, some of these guys played the league, the, the, these, these inductees are, started playing the league in 95, and uh, it was, uh, so, so everybody was born after, before 95, I think it's on the, it's in the uh, league right now, but, I think in about another year or two, I'm probably going to have guys from 1993 or 94 call and say, hey, Bill, is there a place for my son to play? And that's really going to make me feel lower than I already am. And uh, I just turned 60 this past fall, and, and uh, you know, here I am in my 21st season with the league in 20 years, so really one-third of my life has been in the Frontier League. And, uh, boy, it's had its ups and downs, but overall, it's been a tremendous, tremendous ride. And I've loved all of it. I love everybody that's here. Um, this is a uh, this is a great honor for me, and I might even get a little emotional talking about some of these guys because they take us back to when it started. These guys paved the way. They played in the really bad ballparks. We were lucky to play in some high school fields some of these days. There were no clubhouses in some place. They were dressing in swimming pools at the public community swimming pools. That's what they're changing for. Changing on the bus. Um, it's all true, people. It's all true. And now you see with the facilities we have in the league to the amount of guys that are being signed to the caliber of play, guys that have played a double and triple ball and some big leaguers that are coming back and playing in the Frontier League. It's an amazing, amazing journey that this league has been on. And Steve Garmick alluded to it a little earlier. It's because we have a family atmosphere. And I was talking to Kirk Taylor last night, one of the inductees, and he said, what made this league was back in the early days, everybody was a family. We knew it. Everybody had a purpose. Back in those days, we only had eight teams. It was pretty easy for me to get around. I knew just about every single player in the league Unfortunately, I don't get to know a lot of you guys nowadays, like I did back in those days. But I mean, we everybody worked hard together, we parted hard together, we go out after games, and but we lived it. We lived it. We breathed it. And these first inductees are some of the guys that did it. I want to thank our Hall of Fame committee first, and it was chaired by Brian Wickline, general manager in Rockford. Brian, where are you? Here somewhere. There he is over here. Um, Andy McCauley was on that uh, committee. Steve Gomrick with the Grizzlies. Steve Tassler and myself. And it was uh, it was a lot of fun doing it. We set some criteria, and these guys all met it. And it was really getting down to the to the inaugural class. It became pretty easy when you started seeing this. So these guys, that in this one special event that we are going to honor today, uh, have been it all worthwhile for me, and hopefully for them as well. So I thank each and every one of you, all the families that are here today, and now the kids of our players, that uh, it's, just, it's amazing to see. It really is. I'm so proud. So I want to start this thing off with, uh, as Peter Gammons called him, the Babe Ruth of the Frontier League. Morgan Burkhart came to the league in 95. He finished as the uh, runner-up MVP in 95. Then in 96, 97, 98, he won the MVP. His last year in 98, 36 home runs, 98 RBIs, hit 404 in 80 games. Unbelievable year. And everybody that's being inducted here, with the exception of Aaron Ledbetter, who never saw him play, I'm sure. But all the other guys, 
all have Morgan stories. And there's a ton of them. You know, three home runs, nine RBIs in a game. It was rained out after five innings. <laughs> uh, just little things like that. But there's, there's untold stories about Morgan. Morgan left here in, uh, after the 98 season. A year and a half later, he's in the big leagues with the Red Sox, and his first at bat against Mike Messina gets a base hit. And uh, his, his all-time idol, Will Clark, flipped him the ball at first base. It's pretty cool stuff. And my personal moment that I was so proud of was seeing Morgan in White Sox Park. Seeing his big picture plastered up on the, on the video board and it said, three-time Frontier League Most Valuable Player. Okay? I said, that's our boy. That's Morgan. And he did more for this league as a player. Wouldn't even know. Today, Morgan is a coach with the San Diego Padres, and uh, he's a hitting instructor with him. He's not able to be here with us today, unfortunately. But his father, Frank Burkhardt, who I like to call the first father of the Frontier League, um, he's also had another son by the name of Damon, so one of the great trivia questions of the Frontier League is it uh, what brother combination hit the most home runs in Frontier League history? Well, Morgan had 86 and Damon had two, so that, that's the total. <laughs> but Damon was a good player, don't, don't get me wrong. He played three or four years in the league, right? Four years in the league. So, uh, without further ado, I want to bring up the father of Frontier League's greatest player. I want to bring up Frank Burkhart. down here, but he's, uh, they're on a road trip. I think they're in Quad Cities. But uh, I would like to, uh, first of all, kind of tell you how his career got started. Uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he played at Central Missouri State in, the, in 1994, his senior year. They won the Division II World Series. There was uh, three players drafted all that off of that club. He was not drafted. Uh, so now he is finishing his degree and he's working in construction in Kansas City and planning a church league or something. And uh, I'm a, a retired educator and I'm looking for a job for him. So he calls me up on the phone one day and says, hey dad, uh, I'm gonna sign a contract to play with the Richmond Roosters in the Frontier League. And I said, what? And he said, uh, you're Richmond Roosters. I said, Richmond where? Richmond, Indiana. Okay. Uh, what are you talking about? What kind of a league? Well, this is a professional league. You get paid. I said, oh, okay. What do you get paid? He said, I'm gonna make $600 a month. I said, where are you going to stay? <laughs> he said, well, they have these host families and you stay with them. <clears throat> what are you going to eat? <laughs> he said, Dad, I don't know. He said, but I know I got a chance to go play baseball. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I said, and I had been looking for jobs for him, you know. And I said, Morgan, I talked to the AD at Hazelwood Central High School, and they've got a teacher aid job and a freshman baseball coaching job for next year. Morgan, that's when he hung up on me. <laughs> that's a fact. So anyway, he goes on and, and uh, the rest is kind of history, what, uh, what Bill had, had told you about Morgan uh, in the Frontier League and his stats, and he had a great year that last year he was in the Frontier League. But another stat that I think in 1999, the Boston Red Sox signed him, and 
he was sent to, you know, he went to spring training, and uh, he was assigned to Sarasota, and that's high A baseball, and I know all you guys, are high, uh, the, Sar uh, the, front, uh, the uh, Florida State League is all the big ballparks that the major league teams train in spring training. So he's playing in the Florida State League, and that's basically a pitcher's league. Uh, the first half of the league, first half of the season with Sarasota, he hit 23 home runs before he was promoted to double-A Trenton. And that 23 home runs was a record. No other player hit 23 home runs in a full season at Sarasota. So, you know, he was ready for, for bigger things, which came along. Um, his first season with the Red Sox, he had 288, uh, 18 RBIs, and uh, 18 RBIs, four home runs, and uh, in 90 at bats, I believe it was. So he's up and down. He played with Boston in 2000, 2001. Uh, he went to Japan and played a year there, and he came back and then played with the Royals, got up with them for about a month. Uh, if, uh, if he was here, I think what he would say in closing, and to you players out there, in 1998, he was sitting where you're sitting right now, playing for the Richmond Roosters in the Frontier League and loving it. You know, he just loved the league. In 2000, he was playing for the Boston Red Sox in the major leagues. So, to you players out there, hey, it can happen. Put up some numbers. Make it happen. Thank you very much.